Hello, plant friend. I'm Maria, your best plant friend. I'm here to help you care for plants and grow joy while doing so. Today's video is a crafting video all about the most joyful thing ever, flower crowns. You know, I feel like there's an argument that flower crowns are only for little kids, but I disagree. I have never had more fun than when I, as an adult, have made a flower crown for myself and worn it. And there's frankly a bunch of opportunities to wear flower crowns. I made one for my summer solstice party. You can wear it for the spring equinox. If you're a bridesmaid in a wedding, you can offer to make flower crowns for all the bridesmaids. Or even if you're a bride, you can make your own flower crown that you wear the day you get married. They're so festive. They're so fun. And frankly, they're so feminine. But there are flower crowns for kings as well. Um, but I just think we should all be wearing more crowns these days, right? So let's make a flower crown. Growing joy. There are many different ways to make flower crowns. I don't want to say this is the most like fancy way, but it gets the job done. And this is how I've made many of the flower crowns that I've worn before. So you're going to need floral wire, some form of a ribbon. Uh, I think this is called floral tape. That's what's going to fasten it. Uh, good scissors that can cut, you know, thicker floral stems. And then the fun part, oh, wire cutters. And then the fun part is flowers. This is where you can really express yourself. You can pick your favorite flower, your favorite colors. I feel like I led a flower crown workshop once for a bunch of friends. And it was so interesting that each person made a completely different crown that was a exact expression of their personality. We had one girl that had like alien ear, like alien eyeballs coming out. We had another that was super small. We had another one that was like epic and big, right? And it all, they were all were interesting kind of reflections of their personality. So pick flowers that suit you. I think if you're a beginner flower crown person, smaller flowers are better than bigger ones. But if you want to go for the epic big flower crown, live your truth and go for it. So here is how we begin our flower crown journey. The way I like to do it is with three pieces of floral wire. You can either make your crown closed or open. I like to make my crowns open because then you can get it really snug on your head. It's also an opportunity to add a colorful ribbon. You can use twine. You can use kind of more natural like raffia, like that natural kind of baker's twine. If you're making the flower crown for someone else, Else and you don't know how big their head is, this is the way to do it. But if you want to make it for yourself, you can easily just close the loop, which I'll show you how to do later. So the way that I make my crown is I measure my head and this is about as big as I want my crown to go. And then I make this, I fold it once and then I fold it again. You need to leave a little bit of wire on each side because we're going to make, um, like little hooks, which I'm going to explain, but basically the length of the flower crown that you want plus an inch on either side. Now you're going to cut these three pieces. Oops. So you have three pieces of floral wire and they're about the size. They're like a little bit shorter than the length of my head. So you're going to make two loops. You're going to start with one loop on this side. You're going to make a loop that we're going to close with floral tape. And that loop is going to be where you put this loop right here. When we close it, that's going to be where you put the ribbon. So we're making one loop. You need to make sure that it has enough of a little bit of a tail so that the floral wire can close it. And then we're going to loosely braid or twist these three pieces till we get to the other side. When you're braiding, don't make the braid tight. You want to make it loose because in the holes of the braid is where you're going to put the flowers. So we have the basic structure of the crown. It's not pretty, but basically you're braiding it to get these holes that need to be large enough to fit like a bundle of flower stems in. Um, and then basically we're gonna poke the flowers through all the different braid holes until we have the entire crown. So now we go into design phase, right? So I kind of wanna sketch out what I'm building before I do it. Um, when you're cutting flowers and preparing them for a flower crown, what you wanna do is make sure that you have about an inch or two of stem so you can slit it through the braid and then you can trim on the other side. 
Okay, so I've prepped my flowers. I've got yellow. I've got this beautiful flower that ties the baby's breath and the yellow. And then my hero flower, my pink, which is going to match my shirt. I'm going to start with the loop. We're going to make the loop first. And basically how this works is we secure the loop and then we're going to use this floral tape and build the crown. We've made all of these different holes with the braid. And so we're basically going to fill a hole wrap it, fill a hole, wrap it, fill a hole, wrap it, fill a hole, wrap it. It might help you to kind of lay your flowers out in a pattern that makes sense for your crown. So I'm probably going to go baby's breath, yellow, daisy, pink, baby's breath, yellow, daisy, pink, baby's breath, yellow, daisy, pink. So it all um, is in a pattern. But that's just if you want a pattern, live your truth if you just want to kind of go crazy and, and not worry about a pattern. So the floral tape is I'm not a huge fan of floral tape, but I haven't figured out a way to do this that doesn't involve it. Um, you have to kind of pull at it to have it get sticky enough to to hold tight. Um, but I've started the floral tape and I've basically finished. Um, I made the loop and the floral tape has secured the loop. And uh, we'll tuck these ends in as we're wrapping. But I want to get a beautiful flower in there. So I'm going to take a nice chunky piece of baby's breath because I want to ideally have a nice big piece of baby's breath for the beginning of this crown. I'm going to stick the baby's breath in, pull it through, and then wrap. And you wrap it by securing it once. If you have these, don't worry. We're going to go back and trim this after the crown is done. So the baby's breath goes to about here, but when I start my yellow, I want the yellow to be hiding under the baby's breath. So don't do baby's breath yellow daisy because uh, there's going to be too much gap. I want a really juicy, robust, beautiful crown. So if you see, I'm going to insert this yellow flower in a hole about an inch before the flower ends. So I'm going to go like this. Now you have to continue with this one piece of floral tape. So that what you do is I move the baby's breath over. Oops. And then I'm gonna secure under the baby's breath over the yellow. Under the baby's breath, over the yellow. Then I'm gonna fasten this to the crown. The tape might get in your way, so you can also just cut it. See, and there's the beginning of your crown. Now, next up is a daisy. I'm gonna do a couple of daisies and I'm gonna put them under the yellow. So I put them in another hole, pull them nice and close to the crown, and then I secure that with the tape. And you just kind of move right along. Now, I want a little bit more yellow in here, so I'm gonna put one more piece of yellow. Um, and this is as you're building the crown, you're going to notice where there's like kind of bald spots where you can kind of play a little bit more and you'll just move through it and figure it out. Now, this is my first big rose. I want the rose to be pulled up right next to the daisy. So I'm pulling this. Oh, wait, no. So, you know, so as I'm making the crown, I've realized that if I put the rose next to the daisy, there's going to be a nice bald spot. So I need some sort of filler plant that the rose can lay on. So I'm going to put baby's breath here, and then I'm going to put the rose right next to it. So I'm pulling the baby's breath through, attaching it, and then I'm going to put a rose next. And you've just got to kind of play with it until it lays in a way that makes you happy. And then now that I've kind of figured out my core pattern, I'm going to just keep on going until I have kind of secured the whole crown. I'll see you at the end.
All right. So I've made the base of the crown and now I'm going to go in like, do you see there's a bald spot here? There's like areas that I would like it to be just a little more lush. So now I've made little pieces of the tape that I'm going to like kind of pull and make a little tacky. And then if you have bald spots, all you have to do is take whatever filler you want and figure out where the best place for it to lay is. And then you just attach it with a sneaky tie. So here's one. And I'm just going to like do a double knot and there we go. Problem solved. Uh, with this type of floral tape, you've got to like pull it really tight until it breaks off just like that. And boom, you're done. So that'll be pretty. Now I'm looking at it this way. So I'm watching it this way. So I think I want a couple of flowers to be also going in this direction. So I'm going to go in and do that on the other side. All right, so after some tweaks, I think it looks pretty dang good. Um, I went through and either just like stuck stuff in that didn't need to be tied or stuck it in and then tied it. Um, I wanted to also note that this is the way you can do it with smaller flowers, but you can also, if you wanna make a bigger bundle, I could have taken the, a baby's breath, a yellow and a rose, tied this together in the beginning and then poked them in to like build a more robust crown. So it's totally up to you. I might do another one that way tomorrow. So then I've cut pink ribbons and I've made the loops that are tied with the floral tape. I'm going to thread the loops with my ribbon and this is how I'm going to fasten the crown to myself. I like to thread it and tie it like this, but I like a double loop on the ribbon because then it like ties into my hair and I think it's really pretty. I'm going to go like this. We're going to give it a tie. And oh my gosh, it's so pretty. I love it. It really looks good from either side. I think this is the best side. So then because I have these ribbons, I can either, you can wear it multiple ways. You can wear it like this. Or you can wear it up like that. I like to wear it up like this. And then, oh, I can turn around and show you. Am I the prettiest fairy in the whole world? How do I look? Let me know in the comments. Do you have a better way of doing flower crowns? <laughs> Let me know. I know this was a little bit archaic and chaotic, but it works, right? Look how cute I look. Um, there's multiple different ways to do it. I love that flower crowns can be so expressive. You can make one for every season. You can buy flowers at the grocery store the way that I did, or you can go forage flowers. So last year I threw a summer solstice party. I foraged all of the wildflowers on my property and I built the crown out of the foraged wildflowers. It was really beautiful and a really special way to honor the changing of the seasons. So let me know if you'll be making a flower crown and why you might be making a flower crown for what occasion, because you know what? You don't need an occasion for a flower crown because you're a queen and you can make your own crown and make it be plenty. So like, subscribe, comment, let me know your thoughts on this video if you want more DIY crafts. And I hope that this video and a flower crown will help you continue growing joy.